Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Amen. Our beginning is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And even as we start the 10th day of this revival, I invite you to join us even in a time of praise and adoration. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
and washed us unto you be glory now and forevermore we are lifting our hearts again unto you this evening even as your word proceeds even as your word comes May the entrance of this word bring life. May your word not return to you void, but may your word prosper in whatever you send it. We know your word is active. May we experience that active word. The word that is sharper than any two-edged sword. May we all come under this ministry. And may we emerge a transformed people. A people who go forth in power, taking nations, bringing many even into your fold, so that your church will grow in leaps and bounds. We thank you, Father, even in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let us at this moment welcome Reverend Dr. Solomon Norton, even as he continues. Hallelujah. Give me oil in my life. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my life. I pray. Hey, give me oil in my life. Keep me burning. Hallelujah. Of day, give me oil 
in my life. Keep me burning. Lord, we want to burn for you. Give me oil in my life. I pray. Give me oil. Give me oil in my life. Keep me burning. Keep me burning, Lord. Keep me burning till the break all day. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna to the King. Of kings, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Oh, give me oil in my life. Give me oil. Oh, ya bara ba bo shi de bihan. of respect wherever you are you want to be praying and saying Lord please tonight as we come to share fellowship give me oil give me your oil and keep me burning Lord please let me bend till the break of day lift your voice wherever you are in prayer say Lord keep me burning till the break of day give me oil Lord Give me oil, Lord. Give me oil. Psalm 92 verse 10 says that you will anoint us with fresh oil. That says, my head has thou exalted. My horn has thou exalted. Like the horn of a unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Lord, we need fresh oil. That our garments will always be white and our heads will never lack ointment. Lord, give us oil and keep us burning till the break of day. It's night, Lord. And the COVID-19 is evading certain territories, Lord. But give us oil that we will be burning, Lord, till the break of day. May we not lose our faith. May we not lose our oil. May we not lose our vibrancy, Lord. In the dark hour, please give us oil. Please give us oil, Lord. Give us oil. Let there be a stirring of your anointing upon our lives. Give me oil in my life. I pray. kept us, protected us, protected us and delivered us from the snare of the fowler. The great God of wonders who has not given us away to the will of our enemies. He alone deserves praise and glory this beautiful evening. 
Wonderful people of Joint Church, I bring greetings to you from Mount Zion Methodist Church in Sakumano. You are great people, and I thank God for your lives and for this wonderful fellowship that we are sharing. I pray that the grace of God will abound to you, and I want to assure you that this whole COVID thing will be over, and when this COVID thing is over, we will all be here on account of God's grace. Give him praise and thanks to God for the wonderful things, the wonderful deliverances and miracles that he brought in our lives. To him alone, be praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're still looking at the kingdom and the power, the move of the Holy Spirit. The move of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, I reminded us about Four more things that are very important signs that necessarily show in the life of anyone who is experiencing the move of the Holy Spirit. Anybody who is experiencing the move of the Holy Spirit. That sign is a necessary sign. So if you don't have it, then it means that you are not yet alive in the spirit. You are not yet alive in the spirit. I said that one of the principal things about a church that is experiencing the move of the Holy Spirit is that that church, and I want to emphasize that bit again. I said that that church gathers regularly, physically. And I'm saying that it doesn't mean that the church does not apply common sense or wisdom. But the church applies wisdom in practical fellowship as well. And so we don't lose sight of the power that we have in God while we apply faith, while we apply wisdom and knowledge. We combine all. To the glory of God. Now, so I'm encouraging that when physical meetings resume, don't be afraid. And I encourage that you participate and still keep the protocols in operation. Let me tell you a story before I tell you, I share what I'll share with you today. There is a story of a man who was traveling out of his town to visit a friend who was not doing too well. And he met a strange man, a very strange man. The man looked very strange in appearance and everything and the way the man spoke was very strange. But the man beckoned to him and he was afraid because the man was very strange. But the man said, come, I'm not coming against you, just come. And the man asked him his name. He said, please, what is your name, sir? He said, why do you want to know my name? He said, I just want to know. And the man told him his name. And this strange man who asked for the name said, oh, I, I, I know your name already. I just asked. Is your daughter not called this? Is your son not called this? Is this woman not your wife? And the man was taken aback. And he wondered what kind of man he had met. Then he said, sir, may I please know who you are? And this strange being said, my name is Death. He said, really? He said, yeah, my name is Death, and I'm going to the town to go and pick five people away because it is their time to go. And he said, oh, can't you do something about it? Why do you like taking people away like that? Why do you like killing people? He said, no, I don't kill people. I only take away those whose time is due. So, he said, okay, when I, I, I'll return later today. Uh, will I meet you when I come? He said, well, you may not meet me, but if you come and I'm not around and you don't see me, come to this junction at 6 p.m. and you will see me here. 
So the man returned from his journey. 6 p.m. He went to the junction and death was there. But guess what? When the man returned from town, from where he, he went to, back to his town, he heard that 220 people had died in the town. So when he met death at the junction, he said, man, you told me you were going to take five people. How come you have taken over 200 people? He said, well, when I went to the town, I was going to take five people. But the others who joined them are people who died out of fear. He said, I took only five. The rest died out of fear. Beloved in the Lord, fear kills a lot of people before their time. But faith overcomes fear. Perfect love casts away fear. And if you're a child of God and you have faith, this is the time to let your faith work. This is the time to not just talk your faith, but to walk it. In this evening, I told you yesterday, I'm coming to mention three main things that happens in the life of a man who encounters the move of the Holy Ghost. I'm reading from the book of Acts, chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 3. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, I mean, and, and all the others, I will not mention their name. Or let me just mention their names and let's go through the full, the full list. Nicanor, Timon, Perminas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. And a large number of priests became obedient to their faith. Uh, which means that they were priests, but they were not disobedient. They, they were disobedient to their faith. Listen, it says that now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. I just want to stop here. And I pray that God will bless his word. In our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I want to submit to you that the man in question here, Stephen, was an ordinary man. He was not one of the initial disciples. He was not in the upper room with them when the Holy Ghost was poured. But he was one of the people who got converted as a result of the sin. Listen, when he became he heard the gospel and saw the manifestation of the spirit. The first thing that happened was that he was convicted to become a part of the saints. And one of the foremost things that you experience when you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit is a strong conviction that makes you give up on that which is not godly and then you grow up in that which is godly. There are things to give up in order for you to grow up in God. If you don't give those things up, you cannot grow in God. So he gave up everything he knew before and held on tenaciously to the faith that was being professed by the disciples. I ask you again today, what change has taken place in your life since you became a Christian? 
Have the old things passed away? Or are you faking your holiness and your spirituality? As a priest, as I deal with people every now and then, one of the conclusions I've come to is that the experience of a changed life in Christ is rare for so many people who claim to be Christians. That experience is rare. Because after the conviction, there is a conversion. And so, among the ordinary people who now got added to the disciples, the disciples now said, look amongst you. Listen. And choose from among you seven people whom you know to be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. And beloved in the Lord, the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the wisdom of God upon the seven people was not secret. It was an evidence that the community of believers could behold. So when the apostle said, listen, you yourself select, listen, uh, select seven people who are going to serve food. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Waiters. Waiters. Choose from among you seven waiters. And the criteria for becoming a waiter in a restaurant, in a hotel, in an eatery, first of all, full of the Holy Ghost and full of wisdom. But you know the secret? What they were trying to say is that you cannot wait on people when you have not waited on God. And it's only the man who has waited on God that receives impartation to be able to wait on people. So Simon, so Stephen, a man whose work was to serve tables was filled with the Holy Ghost and wisdom. The Bible said that he was full of faith. Jesus Christ. And look, the Bible says that in, in, in verse 8, that now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. You would think that it is the disciples who said, listen, let us focus on the ministry of the word and prayer who will be working miracles. But the man who was also waiting on tables, because he had the spirit of God, he was also a worker of signs and wonders. That is why I said to you two days ago that democratization of charisma is about the Holy Spirit coming upon everybody and everybody who received the Holy Spirit being able to walk in the miracles. Not because they have a special gift, but because they have the gift who is the giver of the gifts. Listen, Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift to the church. When I'm coming to give you a parcel, I wrap it. And then what I actually want to give to you is embedded in what I am bringing to you. What I am giving to you is a gift. But within the gift is another gift. Which is a real, like another gift for you. Are you here with me? So I give you a, a gift and it is in a very nice bag. You can use that bag for one thing. But what is in the bag is also another gift that will serve another purpose. The Holy Ghost is a gift that is carrying gifts. And when, Simon, when Stephen received the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
He did not just serve tables. He was a worker of signs and wonders. What am I trying to say to you today? It's just a simple thing. Conviction must lead to conversion. And conversion, true conversion, will lead to commitment to the things of God. And commitment to the things of God will lead to signs and wonders. Hallelujah. So if you are not moving in the miraculous, there must be something wrong. Because if you have the Holy Ghost, you don't need a clerical to walk in the anointing. If you have the Holy Ghost, it is not the title of a reverend or a bishop or archbishop or pope or whatever that makes you walk in the miraculous. True conviction that leads to true conversion, conversion leads to commitment to the things of God. And I want to ask you about your commitment to the things of God. Stephen was so committed that at the peril of his life, he was still telling the truth. Are you still sharing the gospel in the midst of this COVID? Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Whoever wants to lose his life, whoever gives his life away will rather save it. That's what Jesus said. He put his life on the line. And I like the testimony about him because the Bible says that I'm reading Acts chapter 6 for you. Verse 15 says that all who were sitting in the Sahindri looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. When the Holy Ghost is on the move in the church, the church takes Christian spirituality into society. And they can see godliness in, on, on, they can see godliness on us. We wear godliness on our bodies. We wear godliness in our lifestyle. We wear it on everything that we do. True Christian spirituality is practically perceivable. It is observable. And I just, I, when I think about it, I just, I, 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 I just don't get it. A man who was serving tables. What kind of husband are you? Are you a husband by the spirit? Do you have the wisdom of God? If, if the criteria for serving tables requires fullness of the spirit, fullness of faith, fullness of grace, and wisdom, what kind of wife are you? What kind of Christian are you? Unfortunately, in this COVID times, we have people who have leaned onto the side of wisdom and forgotten the side of faith. But wisdom must be combined with faith. Because the moment your wisdom is emptied of faith, it will turn to foolishness and lead to ungodliness. I want to challenge you again. That do not forsake the gathering of the saints. Where there is a real change in a man's life because of an encounter with the Holy Ghost, we go all out for God. And going all out, like I said, does not mean acting unwisely. But it means applying faith and wisdom to the glory of God and to the dismay of the devil. Some of us are making the devil too happy. In this COVID. Because we talk about all the wrong things. And forget about all the good things that the Lord has done. Listen, Melinda Gates said that she sees dead bodies on the streets of Africa. 
when this COVID thing started. That's what she said. She sees dead bodies on the streets of Africa because she thought that, oh, we don't have the health system that can sustain this situation. Do you know why we are doing better than America? Do you know why we have done better than all those nations with serious health care? It is because of the grace of God. It is because of the grace of God. Sunday, I was talking to a friend who had also recovered from COVID. And she said, Osofu, I don't even know how I got it. I don't know where I got it. Because I have observed the protocols. I have done everything. I don't know. How, I've been thinking. I said, listen, you have to stop thinking about it. And thank God that you have recovered. Maybe God just wanted you to know that even when you are infected with COVID, he can heal you. Beloved in the Lord, Stephen and his people were under attack. But they stopped hiding because they had the Holy Ghost. Their zeal for God was not quenched. I want to encourage you once again. Your convictions must return. The vitality of the faith that you had at conversion must return. The element of your first love that exuded a certain level of agility and commitment to the things of God when you first came to know the Lord must return. That thing that made you go all out in those days must return. Because when the kingdom comes and the power is available and the move of the Holy Spirit is taking place, we ride high above diseases. We ride high above challenges. We ride above all kinds of obstructing situations because God is with us. We make a difference with our faith. I pray in the name of Jesus that this evening the Lord will stir up your first love. May the Lord tear away any idol that has come to sit upon the throne of your heart that he will be in first position in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up prayer and say, Lord, please, this evening I'm begging you. Help me to return to the earlier days of my conviction and conversion so that I'll regain the vitality of the commitment that I had when I was on fire for you. Lift up prayer to the Lord. Remember those days when you go out all alone and pray. Remember those days when you will stand, whether someone is listening or not, and still preach because you believe that someone will still hear you. Remember those times when you always frequent the chapel because of your love for God. Remember those times when you will give generously to push the things of God. Remember those times when you will always call for family devotions and family prayer meetings when you will never step out until you have read the word and prayed. Remember those days when you don't miss any prayer meeting. Remember those days and pray that Lord return me to the days of my conviction, conversion and the days of my highest commitment. Return me to those days. Rabba kushalalaba santa bahaya. Rebe dibigo santi dibrihosi. You say, Lord, give me oil and let me burn till the break of day. Stir me up, Lord. Stir me up, Lord. So I'll take my spirituality into society. I'll take my spirituality into the workplace. I'll take my spirituality wherever I go. That whether I'm a hairdresser or a mason or a teacher or, or, or a banker or a lawyer, uh, whatever I do, whether I sell at the market, whatever I do, whatever you do, you want to pray the Lord, like Stephen, help me to still have high spirituality and wisdom.
being full of your grace and full of faith. Let me manifest the fullness of the agility of your spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord help me. Lord help me. Keep me burning, Lord, till the break of day. Keep me burning till the break of day. The Bible said that they saw the face of Stephen as that of an angel. May something come upon you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. That will change your very physical appearance. Amen. May the Lord put upon you a certain supernatural way. Amen. That will make others see the transforming power of the Holy Ghost on you. Amen. Give me oil in my life. Keep me burning. Say to the Lord. Give me oil in my life. I pray. Yeah, give me oil. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray that we will not lose our faith. We will not lose our convictions. Amen. We will not lose the virtues of our conversion. Amen. We will not lose the vitality of our commitment. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 to the break of day. continue to celebrate this 28th anniversary we encourage you to offer yourselves first to God so that you be vessels of honor and so that you will support even this worthy cause by making various donations in cash and in kind in support of the church the USSD code is crawling on the screen and the church Momo number is also crawling. We encourage you to offer in thousands, in hundreds, all for the glory of God. Even as we bring this session to a close, I invite each and every one of us even to join us, we share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.
God bless you. Amen.